for over 20 oh, years. She's been pouring into the lives of people who desperately need to be encouraged. Today, he walked the dome and prayed for you. So somebody's been praying for you today. You felt that it was Dr. Bobby Joyner. He made take a huge family photo with everybody. You see, you see, you know it's time to 
And we, and we had just written the song we started with tonight about I am a Christian. And so we had a shirt made that said, I am a Christian on the front of it, long sleeve shirt.
Listen, first of all, it says that Jesus is our creator. Did you see that in the text? Listen, don't you miss it. It said this, through whom he created the worlds. This lets us know that Jesus was the agent of creation. Wrap your brain around that for a minute. And speaking of your brain, he made that out of dirt. Yet it's capable of some astonishing abilities. This three pound mass of cells can store over 100 trillion gigabytes of information. The average iPad only holds 32 gigs. That means you have the equivalent of four trillion iPads up in your head. Yeah, that's right. You look good and you're smart. And listen, it can do some amazing things. Listen, it can handle over 15,000 decisions per second, as in the case of the digestive process following eating. We can taste one part of quinine in a million parts of water. Our sense of smell can differentiate between a million different odors. I know that to be true. I've done me a lot of youth camps in my day. Some of you bros be getting funky on about that third day in camp, bro. Little bros be coming up to me, preacher Tony, I just want the Lord to do a work in my life. I'm like, brother, forget about the Bible. Here's some soap. Use it in Jesus' name. Bless those around you, brother. <laughs> a million different odors. That's amazing to me. But listen, our sense of touch, our sense of touch can detect a projection that's only one twenty-five thousandth of an inch high dust. Who did that? Where'd that come from? Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 12 says the seeing eye and the hearing ear, God created them both. Listen to me, you were created by God. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship. That word workmanship means work of art. You are a priceless treasured work of art. And listen to me, there is no other artist's work on the planet that can compare to your brilliance. No other artist. You can go all the way back to the old masters or the modern icons. They can't touch you. You go all the way back to Michelangelo, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Picasso. You can even look at William de Kooning's work, which in September of 2015, called The Interchange, it sold for over $300 million. I don't care. You can take the equivalent wealth of all of those artists and they can't compare to you. Why? Because you are a priceless, treasured, original work of art made by Jesus. He's our creator. Who is this Jesus? We just happen to be the most brilliant artist ever and what he makes actually breathes and lives and brings him glory. He's our creator, but he's not just that. He's also our sustainer. Did you see it? Listen, I haven't left the Bible. It's right here. It says this, he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Listen carefully. I was home one night watching a scientific television program. They were bragging that it was hosted by what they call the most brilliant minds anywhere in the world. One of them was the infamous atheist, Dr. Richard Dawkins. The other is famed physicist Stephen Hawking. Uh, what they had to say was quite intriguing to me. They talked about a lot of different things, but one of the things they mentioned was the fact that our Earth was tilted on its axis. You do realize that this planet Earth is tilted on its axis at a 23 and a half degree angle. And then the experts said that it should not be tilted at a 23 and a half degree angle because it's physically impossible due to the mass distribution of water weight on our globe. It's physically impossible. But they said they were glad that it was tilted at a 23 and a half degree angle because it gives us our four seasons. And if it was not tilted at the 23 and a half degree angle, they said the events that would unfold would be monstrously catastrophic. You might be out there looking at me with your old arms folded, just kind of looking at me like, I don't need God. I don't need God. I don't need God. Come out. Oh, yes, you do. You need him to hold this world chilling at a 23 and a half degree angle, brother. And you know what?
rib jeans, uh, cool ball with the 16s In the studio, I'm like a legend I'm with a microphone, I'm like a 16 But these songs ain't for the jack Who tryna build for others, your own attack You tryna be the life and they blow it in back You ain't can't use a shotgun and catch a fish I'm on, you said they never attack You call me the full pack Please don't get up in my place, somebody say, put up, put up, say, put up, 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 put up, put up, say,
I need all you to do while your phone is out, go ahead and text. 24502. Text win. I need all y'all to do that for me. We're gonna break the system. Alright? Y'all gonna win the Polaroid camera. Y'all can win the guitar signed by all the artists for a $20,000 scholarship. And then visit me at the booth. Stop by and say hi to your homeboy Caramel Drizzle. I'm out. We on our coffee table and she would preach to us. And um, she's still preaching now to a little bit bigger audience. But I hope, I hope all of you know that each of you are original, that God created each of you uniquely for his purpose. And so we are so excited to be here tonight. And y'all want you to join us and welcome him. Sandy Robertson! Hey, what's up, what are you doing? What's up? Are y'all having fun? Oh, it's so loud. Wow, y'all are awesome and very loud. I love it, I love it. If y'all don't mind, then I'd like to open us up in prayer, all right? Dear God, I just come to you right now, God, and I just pray that the attention is not on me tonight, but it's on you, God. I pray that you speak through me right now in this moment. And I pray that everybody in here, even from the top row, that they have eyes to see and ears to hear exactly what you have to put on my heart tonight. Jesus, I just pray that you continue to shape the atmosphere. It is in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go. So tonight, I love you too. Thank you so much. Tonight. We're going to be talking about what is the difference between a champion and a legend. Two really good things, right? But one carries a lot more weight. You see, because with one, you win a trophy. But with the other, you win a legacy. With one, you drop the mic. But with the other, you help others win and pass the mic on from generation to generation to come. With one, you play for victory. But with the other, you live for victory. And oftentimes, the story starts with a champion, but it ends with a legend. Just like the story of David and Goliath. Are you all familiar with the story? David and Goliath? Okay. So it starts out with this champion, Goliath. And he comes out to face the forces of Israel. He's over nine feet tall, and he wore a bronze helmet and a bronze coat of mail that weighed over 125 pounds. He also wore bronze-like armor and carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. So this dude was very extra, right? Not only is he this born to be champion, but he has everything he needs to win the battle. So imagine the surprise when this little pipsqueak David prances up and is like, Hey, put me in. I want to fight him. And so I was like, No, don't be ridiculous. You can't go in and fight because you can't possibly win. He said, You're just a boy. And this man has been a man of war since his youth. So no. But David persisted. He said, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, and when a lion or a bear came to steal away from the flock, I would go after it with a club, and club it to the death. If the animal turned on me, I would club it to the death. I've done this for both lions and bears, and I'll do it again for the Philistine too, for he defied the armies of the living God. And the same God that rescued me from the lions and bears will rescue me again from the Philistine too. And so Saul said, all right, go ahead, and may the Lord be with you. You see, this was an amazing moment because it was about somebody forgetting about what he could do and focusing on what God needed to do through him. And I think a lot of times in life, we don't do that, especially me. I think about when I have enough faith to say, all right, obviously this guy is a lot bigger than me, because I can, but I can win because God's in me.
Let's get those.